Hey everyone. So today we're going to create a new closure project that's going to be centered around authentication. I've already created a directory here called CLJ auth. And first we're going to need a deps.eden file so that we can manage all of our dependencies using the closure CLI. And we'll be using Vim for this video series, if you will. Uh, you don't have to, you could use Emacs or VS Code or whatever else there is. But first we'll need to define the source paths. So all of our code is going to live inside of a source subdirectory of this project. And then next we're going to also need to list out all of our dependencies. And this is where I make the joke that because it's a closure project, we need closure. So we're including closure, blah, blah, blah. But before we continue, I decided to split this video series into three parts. The first one, which is the one that you're watching right now, is going to be a review of how to create a server and some, some basics of Reddit and Ring. And this is going to be a callback to my last video series where I created a full stack project, mostly centered around Reddit. And then in the next video, we're going to do database connection stuff, which this time I'm going to be using next.jdbc and HoneySQL. This is mainly because I want to try out HoneySQL over HuxSQL, which is the library that I used last time. And then finally, the last dependencies that we'll end up using, and also the last video, is all about authentication. And that's what Buddy is for. We have auth and hashers. And hashers is for encryption, so you kind of have a good sense of where this is going. Now, setting up an alias is kind of optional, but I'm going to make an alias server which we'll call the main function of auth.core or that namespace or file. And then I'm not going to add it here because I have it in my global depths. So they then the global closure depths.eden file. I have an alias here called nrepl, which if you don't have it in your global depths.eden, you could copy it from here there, or you could also add it into your local depths.eden. And the nrepl alias is going to be really important for editor connection or editor plugin and because i'm using vim the connection plugin that i'm using is conjure which i'll show in a little bit but we need to create our project structure so let's go ahead and do that and all we really need is a source directory with the namespace of auth as well as a file called core.clj inside of auth and then finally in a separate terminal i'm going to do clj and call the alias of nrepl and if this is the first time you, you're running it, it's going to download all the de other dependencies if you don't already have them. I already ran it, so I, I don't have to wait. But you'll see that the nrepl server is on this port. And if we go into our project, if you're following along with me and using Conjure, I have all my REPL stuff in this little buffer over here. And you can also see that it's connected to the same port that our nrepl is running on. And then also sometimes they give it a name, the session name. This is Don's Koi Cat, I guess. But before we do anything fancy, let's make sure that everything is connected correctly so that we can run this file from the command line. So first we need a main function, and the name here does matter, so it has to be hyphen main to be called by the CLI. All we'll really do is do a print line of hello world, and I think it would be a good idea to also show off the REPL. So inside of a comment block, I'm just going to refresh this file so that our REPL is, can see all of the new changes and then we'll also evaluate this main function which in the buffer you can see that we ran main it prints out to standard output hello world and then the return is nil and that's because print line doesn't return anything in functional programming terms it's a side effect so now that we know our REPL works but let's also go in here create a new terminal, and then call the alias that we created, which I named as server. And this will call the main function from the command line. And there's our hello world. Uh, also as a side note, I don't know what this warning is. I need to actually do some research, but maybe I'll know in the next video. I don't know, we'll find out. But we can get rid of that and go back to our thing. And let's actually set up array to server. So there's two things that we'll need to import. So in a require block or require form, uh, we're going to get the run server function from HTTP kit and that will run our server, but it needs a, a ring router. So for that, we can get it from ring to ring and I'm just going to get, I'm going to alias the entire package here as ring so that we can define an app here using the function ring 
handler, which takes a ring router. And the ring router takes a vector of vectors of path. The first one that we'll be mainly concerned with is API, since this is a backend API. And then within that, we can make a little bit of a nested route. And I'm just going to make a ping. So you can think of this as we're hitting localhost, whatever the port is, I don't know, it doesn't matter. But at slash API slash ping, it'll hit this vector. And then depending on whatever metadata we add to it, we'll get the desired effect. Now speaking of metadata, let's go ahead and add that. It takes it in as a closure map. It's not required, but it is a good idea to name your routes just for debugging purposes. But what is required is the actual HTTP methods that we want. And here I'm going to do a get in which we provide a function. And this is an anonymous function, so we don't have to name it. The argument that's passed in is the request, but I'm not going to use it. So just named as underscore. But what we want to return to the as a response is status of 200 and a body of OK. And that's the bare minimum of a ring router, which we can feed it to the function of run server and then also define the port, which since it's not too important, I'll go with 8080. And for convenience, I'm going to change this hello world to server has started on port 8080. And now in a separate terminal, you could run coj a to run the alias of server and that'll start the server. And we can go ahead and use a client like Insomnia, which is this thing. And we can send the request to ping and that'll give us the okay. Now the next step is to actually start adding middleware and I'll show you why we need to do that. So let's say instead of responding with a string of okay, we want to respond with JSON. So I'll replace the okay with the map of hello world, rerun the server, go back to our insomnia, resend, and this is not JSON. This is actually the representation of a closure map. As you can see, it's a vector or a list or whatever, where the first one's a keyword and the second one is a string. We actually want to format this as a JSON. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna stop the server again. And now we're gonna in import a bunch of other stuff. So the first one is Reddit ring middleware montage. And that's where we're gonna get all the format middlewares. So this is JSON in and JSON out. And then inside of our code, we can treat it as closure maps. But even though this is bundled in, we also still need Muntaja. And also don't worry, this comes with Reddit in the dependency, so you don't have to add or change your depth side even. And then the last middleware we need is the exception middleware. And if everything is spelled correctly, we can just add it to the second argument of ring router, which I'm gonna match as the green paren. So that will go here. So ring router takes in a data map where we could add another map that has middleware as one of the properties. And middleware is gonna be just the list of all the middlewares that we're gonna give it. Now the order here does matter. Um, you can think of it as the bottom one goes first and then it goes all the way up. And we actually want the exception middleware to be run between request and response. Just in case there's any errors in the middle of that communication, we can just go straight to sending an error to the client. And then as mentioned, none of that works without Muntaja itself. So we'll add a Muntaja property where we could provide the Muntaja instance. And yes, even though we're doing functional programming, we do have to deal with class instances, since Clojure is hosted on Java, which is an object-oriented programming language, but honestly not too super important. We're just using it. So, all right, so our app is basically done as in terms of the basic setup. There's one thing I do want to do, which is to set up a little bit of interactive programming or interactive development. To do that, I'm going to make a def once here, def once server, where we'll have an atom that'll store the actual function of the server. This way in main, instead of just running the server, we'll store the return of it inside of server. And we're also going to create a helper function called stop server. And this function will check if the server is empty. If it is, it'll tell the server to time out for 100 milliseconds. And that'll basically tear down the server that's been started. 
and then reset the server atom that we have stored here to nil. And the reason why we do that is so that we can take a look at what's inside of the server after we refresh everything. So we need to refresh our namespace. But we can take a look at what's inside of the server, which is nil right here. And then we can start the server from our REPL. We never have to go into another separate terminal. We just start and stop the server inside of our editor. So back on topic, let's go ahead and start the server, which is evaluating main. Go back to our client, do a send, and now we get JSON. I want to kind of slim down this file and do a little bit of project structure. So we're going to make a couple of the files. So in our explorer, I will make a routes.clj file, a handlers.clj file, and I think that's all we need right now. And this is so that we can take this ping thing here. And we're going to take that. We'll put that inside of routes. As here. Um, let's put this inside of a def. So def ping route. And then inside of handlers, we're going to grab this function and put that inside of handlers, so here. And this function is no longer anonymous, so we'll name it. So defin, and I guess I'll just name it as ping. That's a little bit of project structure. Uh, we actually need to go the other way, so importing this all the way out. So ping needs to be imported inside of routes. So that'll be a require here from auth.handlers. And we're gonna fill up handlers with a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna do as handle, and then we do handles slash ping. It's also, I like the naming of this better, but yeah. Anyways, now we need to import this into core. So inside of our imports list, we'll grab auth.routes, and I'm just gonna get the ping route. That, we just need to add it to this list. So ping route. All the functionality now should be the same. It's just we have a little bit more structure to our app and things are a little bit more extrapolated out and cleaner. Okay, now that we're here, there's another thing that I want to do since we're still inside the realm of Reddit. And that is so that we need to add a little bit more middleware so that we can do post requests instead of just get requests. And that can be accomplished by a thing called coercion, which we can get as this. And for that to happen, we need to also import it. So schema. And in addition to that, we're also going to need all of the relevant middlewares that has to do with coercion. So that's exceptions, request, and coerce response middleware. And these, I don't think it really matters where we add it, so I'm just going to add it to the bottom of this list. And let's scroll down so that you guys can see this a little better. So all of these middlewares, the, just the coercion ones, it's going to allow us to make post requests. And now that we can, let's go ahead and add some routes that will take advantage of that. So in here, I'm going to make a def. And instead of doing a single route like we did with the ping, this is going to handle all the auth routes. So we're going to have a list and then a list each representing each endpoint. So that'd be login and register for the post routes. And while I'm here, I might as well add our users routes. Uh, this is going to be the authenticated endpoint that you can only see if you're logged in, which I don't know if I mentioned, but I'm going to do JOT authentication. Since this is just a get, I'm just going to handle it with the ping. For the login and register, we're going to create a different handler. While we're here, let's add the appropriate bit, or metadata. So inside of the post, we're going to open up another map here. So it's a little bit nested, but handler is going to be where we're going to add the handler. But the reason why we're opening it is because now we're concerned with a property called parameters. And for this to work, I need to import schema.core and I'm naming it S. And what that is, is it's going to offer us type checking. So we could say that we're getting inputs from the body. That's what parameters is. Where the body is going to have three properties, username, password, and email. And we're defining it here to say that they're all going to be strings. And register is going to be pretty much the same. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. When I said pretty much the same, I meant that login does not have email. So let's get rid of that. 
I don't really want to make the dummy handler inside of the handler's file since it's going to be temporary and we're going to get rid of it anyways. So I'm going to add it up here. Uh, the argument here is the request, but we're going to destructure just the parameters property, which we can do like this. And for now, I'm just going to send it back so that we can see it in our REST client. Don't forget to update the handlers down here before we rerun the app. No way, we can't rerun the app. We're not using this yet, so well, let's add that to our routes right here. So auth routes, which we need to import because I'm doing things in the wrong order. That comes from here, auth routes. Now we can rerun the app. So let's refresh our namespace and run this open up insomnia. And then instead of ping, we're going to login, and which is a post. And right now we're not gonna send any data so that I can show you what the coercion middleware does. It'll give us an error basically. And this endpoint wants a username and password. So let's go ahead and do that. Username and password. Now if we send it, we'll get the parameters back, which is this like the body of username and password. We can also hit register. And if you remember correctly, this endpoint needs another thing. So if we do a send now, it will give us the error that the email is missing. So we need to add that. Now, if we send it with the email intact, we get the dummy handler, which just gives us back our body. Okay, let's stop the server now. And I think that's everything in terms of reviewing Raiden and Ring. In the next video, we'll introduce the database portion where we're actually going to create users and then can also connect this to a existing Postgres database. So I'll see you next time.